shout, we shout your name, we shout, come on, your praise, Jesus, your great Jesus, we pray, we shout, we shout. Father, we thank you. Come on, just lift your hands right now and just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We magnify you. Just spend a moment, just you and God right now. And just worship. Your 
Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Bible says the Father is seeking those that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Worship is not something you practice. Worship is something that is deep in your spirit. And when you worship out of the overflow and the abundance of what God has put in your spirit, miracles happen. Things that never would have taken place ever in your journey happen when you just worship. The stress goes away. The fear goes away. The burdens go away. The thoughts go away. When you just worship the Lord That's all you gotta do Just bask in the glory of His presence Cause He's great He's so great He's greater than all your thoughts He's greater than all the circumstances He's so great that's my God, He's so great. Oh, I worship you, Lord. Just worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. worship you in spirit I worship you in truth and I worship you in spirit there is none like you oh I worship you in spirit I worship you in truth I worship you in spirit there is none like you oh I worship you in spirit I worship you in truth and I worship you in spirit, there is none like you, oh I worship you in spirit, I worship you in truth And I worship you in spirit, there is none like you One more time, I worship you in spirit, I worship you in truth And I worship you in spirit, there is none like you Sing, there is none like you, 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 I worship, I worship you in spirit, I worship you in truth, I worship you in spirit, there is none like you. And I worship you in spirit, I worship you in truth, I worship you in spirit, there is none like you, say there, there is none like you, there is none like you, there is none like you, there is none like there is none, there is none like you, oh there is none like you there is none like you yes there is none there is none there is none like you come on there is none like you there is none like you oh there is none i worship i worship you in spirit i worship you in truth I worship you in spirit, there is none like you. Say it now. I worship you in spirit, I worship you in truth. I worship you in spirit, and there is none like you. Mm. We 
praise you, Father. We adore you, Lord. We magnify you. We make you bigger, Father, than anything, than any circumstance, than any situation that's taking place in our life today. God, every thought that needs to be taken captive, take it right now. For every situation, circumstance, for every feeling that is not of you right now, God, take it, take it captive right now. Cover it right now in this moment. We bless you, Father. We honor you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for a release of your spirit upon this place in a mighty and powerful way. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the worship. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the glory. And somebody in this place shouted, Amen. And amen and amen. Give him a shout of praise one time. Hallelujah. 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 Hug a neck before you're seated. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Hey, the Young Adult Christmas Party will be here at the church Sunday, December 16th at 6 p.m. Please bring a dish to share and a $5 gift to swap. We hope to see you there. I would like to invite all of our middle and high school students to the Ignite Youth Christmas Party here at Ignite Church on Friday, December 21st from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Come hang out with us for a night of fun and games. Bring a small gift of around $10 for a swap and a friend. We'll see you then. Hey church, our annual Christmas Eve service will be at 6 p.m. December 24th here at the church. Invite family and friends for a beautiful evening of songs and celebrating the birth of Jesus. Snacks and refreshments will be served afterwards. We hope to see you all there. That was quick. <clears throat> Amen. You glad you're in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. We serve a great God, don't we? <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and prepare to honor God with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Amen. If you need an envelope, flag a servant leader down. They'll pass an envelope to you. If you're a guest this morning with us, please stop by the reception center in the lobby. We've got a special gift for you. Just our way of saying thank you for being here with us today. We want to get to know you. We want to get you plugged in. We want to get you connected to what God is doing here at Ignite. How I many of you know God is doing some pretty powerful and awesome things? Amen. We had a wonderful uh, outreach to the homeless in Burlington yesterday. It was incredible. I encourage you, if, you uh, uh, if you've never done anything like that before, uh, it's a powerful, powerful thing. So you don't want to miss that. Jump on board with the next one. It's incredible. We found some favor with the Burlington police yesterday. They're going to make a way and make sure that we get to do what God's called us to do. Amen. And uh, it's going to be incredible. We're going to change. We're going to change that, that landscape. We're going to change it. We're going to bless them. We're going to encourage them and uh, strengthen them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Let's pray over these gifts one more time. And you get to sit for a little bit, a little bit more. Amen. Are you ready? I mean, you're, you're about to put seed in the ground. You're about to cause hell to shake and tremble. Because what you're putting in this basket this morning, it's not just money. It is a seed. And the Bible says that, that that devourer is the seed eater, right? That's what a devourer is. It's a seed eater. And when you put seed, when you put this seed, your tithe in this basket right now, you are rebuking the devourer off of your life. You're allowing the kingdom of God to expand and to grow so that this local house, above and beyond, our missionaries are supported. We've got uh, ministries that we support. You know, God is doing so many powerful things that you don't even get to see or even know what's happening. But we're planting seed all over the world. Amen? Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every gift. I thank you for each and every tithe, every offering, God, that's about to be sown. We rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that we are changing the which we're changing the, the, the lives of, of people all over the world. We're changing people in this city, in this region, and that you are some, up to something good. You're up to something mighty. You're up to something powerful because you are the way maker. So we bless you. We thank you. We honor you. And we ask you to put a special blessing on this offering today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen and amen. Bring those gifts up to the front. Come on.
light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, say, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, say, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. That is who you are. Sing that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Sing that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. I'll say this, say, even when. Even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I don't feel you, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you work again. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work again. Even when I don't feel it, you work again. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work again. Even when I don't feel it, you work again. You never stop. You never stop working. Oh, Waymaker, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Come on. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, say it again. Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Say that, that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh. That is who you are. That is who you are. Yes, that is who you are. 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 Come on, do you believe he's your main waymaker this morning? My goodness. Don't go anywhere yet. Come on. Don't leave. Don't leave. Because he never stops. Tell your neighbors, say he never stops. Tell him he never stops working. Oh, yes. Yes, even when say. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. He never stopped, did he never stop working? He never stopped, did he never stop working? Even when I don't see it, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. He never stopped, he never stopped working. He never stopped, you never, never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Yes, waymaker. Yes, waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, 
That is who you sing that is who that is who you are yes that is who you are 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 <laughs> Come on, somebody put your hands together and just thank the way maker in this place today. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me ask you a question. How would you worship if you were just one worship away? Just one worship away from changing everything in your life. Just one worship away. What if you were right now at this moment were at your tipping point and you were just one worship away? Just one. Just one. How would you worship if you were about 10 minutes from the generational curses that have been plaguing your family and taking everybody down in your family? If you were just 10 minutes away, the addiction that's been plaguing and battling your family or your life, if you were just one worship away, What if all the prayers, the fasting, the altar calls, the tears, the offerings, you've done all that, but what if it boiled down to a moment just like this? What if you were just one worship away? Cause he never stops, he never stops working Even when you can't see him Even when you can't feel him He never stops, he never stops working for you You were one worship away. What if you were just a few minutes away from the breakthrough, from the breakthrough, from the release in your life? Oh. Just one moment changes everything. Never stop working. Mm -hmm. You're in this place today and you've turned your back on God. Don't worry because He never stops working. If you're in this place today and you've lost your worship, don't you worry. He never stops working. If you're in this place today and you're broken and beat up in your body. You're sick. You're under an infirmity. Don't you ever stop pressing and praying and believing for your healing. Because he never stops working. If you're in this place and you've got family. You've got, you've got brothers and sisters or sons and daughters. Or anybody in your family and they've not come to the saving grace of your heavenly father. Don't you stop praying for them. Because he never stops working working he's always working all things together for the good of those who love him so when you and I come together in this place today and we release a sound like this heaven starts moving heaven starts releasing the windows of heaven are opening and pouring over your life when you can't see it when you can't feel it when you feel like he's left you don't you worry he'll never leave you he'll never forsake you he's always working come on Oh, somebody even when I can see it he's working even when I can feel it he's working Come on. One more time, 
mountain Even when I can't see and you're working Even when I don't feel it, you work working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Oh, you never stop He's never gonna stop He's gonna keep pursuing, he's gonna keep bugging you, he's gonna keep going after everything in your life until he gets you. Somebody shout one more time in this place this morning for the way maker. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. High five somebody next to you as you're seated and tell them he's the way maker. Hallelujah. I need a handkerchief. Babe, can you dig in my bag and hang, hand me a handkerchief, please? Jesus. Just say thank you to the worship team this morning. She got me one that matches my outfit. Look at her. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at the person next to you and say, you look good. Tell the person next to you, you look blessed and highly favored. I was up till 12. If, you, if, you're, if you're new to the church, we are a worshiping church. So if you just want a 30-minute fix, it ain't going to happen. We worship until that release is there. I was up to, I don't know, what was I up to, quarter of one last night? I was playing the piano. I was worshiping. I had music going. I was just in the flow. My wife's like, are you ever going to go to bed? And I'm like, I'll get there. I'll get there. I mean, I was just, I was having me a time last night all by myself. Come on. Amen. How do you know there's a man in the Bible who had everything give everybody, everything was given up on him, society, his friends. He was segregated from community. He was segregated from having healthy relationships. And he was filled with brokenness. But in, in, in Mark chapter 5, there's a story. And, and this story is, if, if it's nothing, it's all but encouragement to those that assume that somehow worship has become commonplace. And I don't want your worship to ever become commonplace. You could literally be, as I said a minute ago, just one worship away from everything in your life changing. Just one worship away. Mark chapter 5. Go with me in Mark 5, beginning in verse 1. They came to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he met, ever met anybody with an unclean spirit? Come on. And he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming amongst the tombs and in the mountains and, got, and gnashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, What is your name? And he said to him, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there was a large herd of swine. What did I say last week? Let the pigs do there's pigs all over the Bible. Did you know that? The demons implored him, saying, send us into the swine. Send us into the pigs so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission in coming out. The unclean spirits entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, about 2,000 of them. And they were drowned in the sea. Their, their herdsmen ran away and reported it in the city and in the country. And the people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed and in his right mind. The very man who had, somebody say he had, the legion, and they became frightened. Here we find a man in a region called Gerasenes, which translates to reward at the end. This man, by all accounts, was broken, 
filled with no hope, filled with demons. He'd been marginalized by society, by his culture, left, left himself to die a painful and isolated death. You know, he would cry day and night, just being in torment, cutting himself with stones. The only time people would come to see him was to make uh, you know, make sure his chains and his shackles were tightly in place. There was, how many of you know that there are just some people in your life that are assigned just to make sure you stay stuck? This man was filled with demons. He had no friends and nobody was coming to see him. But on the other side of the water, come on somebody, there was a man who was in the boat who had been turning religion upside down. And he is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And he showed up after 400 years of silence between Malachi and Matthew. And here we find in Luke chapter 2, if you go back and you read Luke chapter 2, and that we're in the season of Luke chapter 2 right now. Angels showed up in the middle of the night speaking to the shepherds saying for unto you was born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord and this shall be a sign unto you that you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and Jesus led a life that by the time he was 12 years old he was confounding the top religious minds of his day sitting in the temple asking questions that they simply could not answer. And by the time he was 30 years old, his cousin John dipped him in a river, and Jesus came out, of the, came out of that water, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him with a voice from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And then Jesus started a three-year journey of an unbelievable ministry, the likes of which this earth has never seen before. This man, Jesus, was walking around doing things that nobody could ever imagine. You have a withered hand. What did he say? Stretch it out. What's wrong with your eyes? You can't see? Here. Here's some mud. Here's some spit. That's Jesus. Deaf, can you hear me now? Lazarus, get up, man. Quit playing like you're dead. Get out of that tomb. Jesus was doing stuff nobody has ever seen or heard of before. But Jesus needed some people to walk it out with him. Come on. Now, if you read Mark 3, it's recorded that Jesus continued all night in prayer. All night in prayer. And when he came out of prayer, he called the disciples over and he named the 12 disciples to whom uh, we would, we would uh, know as the 12 apostles. How many of you know that Jesus did not choose the top 12 religious minds of the day? I mean, he chose regular people with real issues that had a real passion who wanted to fulfill a real mandate in a real way. I'm so glad he didn't choose religious minds of that day who thought that they were doing God a favor. Come on, somebody. Like God is up in heaven begging somebody, oh, please, can you do something on my behalf? Come on, somebody. I'm sure it would be nice if you church people would just come and help me because I got a plan, but nobody wants to play with me. I'm so sad. I might as well just quit playing. Let me tell you something. He's God, and he's got angels, and they cry out, holy, 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 and they go and perform the word. Come on, on your behalf. He can just speak and stars show up. He don't need anybody to do it for him. He can just talk and mountains move. He doesn't need anybody to do it for him. Come on. I'm glad that not only were they regular people, People, but they weren't the brightest people in all of Jerusalem. Come on. They just recognized there was something different in this guy. There was something different. Matthew 16, they were all walking on the road with Jesus. And, and he asked them, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they were like, well, some say Elijah. Some say John the Baptist. Some say one of the prophets. But he put the answer in the question. That's the, that, that's, that's the blessing of a master teacher. He always puts, he, he always messes with the question, right? Who do men say that the son of man is? Do you know? No, Jesus. Do you know? No, 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 Jesus. I, I don't know either. Be encouraged because God can use you too if you don't know Jesus. Come on, somebody. You don't have to have five degrees and, and you can have all of that and that's fine. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit up on the inside of you, if you're not walking with Jesus, you may get a question, who is Jesus? But if you're not walking in with him, you may not know him. But you have an opportunity to walk through that door and say yes to Jesus. If you don't know Jesus in this place and in this season, if you hang out not long enough you can't leave this place without knowing him come on but if you don't have the holy spirit you got a bunch of book knowledge but you haven't experienced him yet my wife was out of town all week this week and thank god you're back <laughs> 
I'd keep singing my, on myself. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, I just had to keep singing myself happy all week. <laughs> what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. So while my wife was away, she was talking with some, with some folks that lived in a different part of the country who, were, who, were, who, who belonged to a Catholic church. And they were telling her everything that was happening in that church. It made us look like we're like 20 years behind. Happening in a Catholic church. Are you there? But they said, but we're still missing a piece. You see, you can know the book. But until you know the one that inspired the book, until you know the one that has downloaded from the heart of God into the heart of man, into the, that has become the inspired word of God, until you know the Holy Spirit, there is always going to be a missing piece. Until you journey, until you talk, until you walk. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on. Jesus chose 12. Not the high-minded. Don't want to touch anything dirty kind of people. He, he got the fishermen, people who knew how to get up early and stay up late, who knew the value of working hard. How many of you know Jesus is still in the business of choosing his team from those who are humble enough to acknowledge their brokenness? But if there's anything in me that you can use, Jesus, please do it. Come on. I mean, in the, in, in the moment he chose his disciples, he started preaching that day on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. And he was preaching on the sand of the shore facing the land. See, this is why I can't just stand behind the podium and just talk all monotone like this and blah, blah, blah. Now, Jesus is standing on the sand of the beach, and eventually he moves to a boat. Why would he have to move to the boat? Because there's so many people on, this, on the shore of, this, of the sea. Now, I can't imagine Jesus just saying, Now, if you'll follow me, come unto me, children. They'd be standing there like, if you come unto me, I mean, Jesus was preaching the sea behind him and preaching with such power and authority that people had never seen anything like this on the face of the earth before. Because if you just preach the truth, how many of you know people show up? So here's the way maker. Here's the truth maker standing on the shore of the sea. We, we need to understand it's not about policies or programs. It's about his presence. And we've got to model our life and model our ministry after that of Jesus. If, 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 if you just preach Jesus, the people that are hungry will show up. Got a phone call this week. I've been keeping it kind of quiet. I haven't been telling you too much, but I've been, I've been working uh, closely with uh, folks with the Billy Graham Association in, in North Carolina. And um, somebody say, it's happening, it's happening. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to fill up a stadium for the glory of God. It's happening. I need you all to pray about meeting in January we're going to have. I need you to pray for all of the works that are, the, that are taking place behind the scenes and that God is going to up, open up a window over Vermont that has never been seen before. Amen? It's happening. You know, here, here's the deal. We're not in competition with any church down the street because everybody's called to reach somebody. Amen? Amen? Let's stop swapping members and be faithful to the calling that God has upon our lives. And let's change this, this, this region and this area for the glory of God. Amen? Somebody say, Jesus is all we need. Now he's preaching and the people are, are crowding around so much that he can no longer stand on the beach. So he had to get in the boat. Now when Jesus gets in a boat, y'all watch out. I mean, it's about to go down, right? So he starts preaching from the boat to the people on the shore. Now, a man who can walk on water didn't need to stand on the boat. Ever wonder why? Why didn't he, why didn't he just walk out in the middle of the, of the water? What did he need a boat for? He stayed in the boat because he, had he stepped out onto the water, he would have had to stop preaching in order to deal with those who would have not been able to handle such an act. They would have missed everything he had to say because they would have been in awe that he was standing in the middle of the sea. 
Because sometimes too much Jesus is going to rock the boat. <laughs> and you see, people want a regular Jesus. They want a bite-sized Jesus. But let me tell you something. My Jesus don't come in bite-sized proportions. He's not an appetizer. Come on, somebody. He's the main course. Come on. Somebody shout, Jesus is enough. And in a generation of watered-down preaching to, to tickle to tickle itching ears we need people pastors and preachers and leaders that preach the gospel come on somebody this book is still all right all 66 books in this bible still fill with power and anointing come on and may the lord take this microphone and my voice away if i ever compromise the gospel to tickle somebody's ear see i don't need a crowd i need the holy spirit when I go out, I don't need a crowd of people around me. I need the Holy Spirit. When I'm standing at a register in a grocery store, I need the Holy Spirit. Jesus, after a long day of ministry in Mark 3, he does something strange, and he says, let us cross over to the other side. And I'm sure the disciples, you know, been like, Jesus, you, you've, been, you've been preaching all day long. You know, take a break. You know, I, I, I can kind of understand a little bit about that passion Jesus must have had. You don't understand, when, when, when I'm getting closer to Saturday, and that's why Saturday nights for me, man, I, I, I really press in, because when I walk through here, I want you to know I'm prayed up, I am worshiped up, I am full of the word, I am ready to go. I mean, I'm ready to go. Kids were trying to talk to me last night. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm like gone. I'm like, I'm not even hearing what you're saying because I'm ready. I'm ready to get in here. And when I come up here and preach, when I finish my message, I go back home and I am so filled up because of what God has done, what, is God, what God is doing, that I can't wait to get back into it and prepare for next week. So the disciples here are like, Jesus, you've been preaching all day long. Aren't you tired? Jesus is like, nope, let's go to the other side. That's how I feel. I could do this all day long. We might as well start having Sunday night services and midweek services. We might as well just start it all. Come on. <laughs> don't start. Don't, you don't tempt me. The disciples are saying, Jesus, you've been out here long enough. Jesus is like, no, I got one more assignment. Tell somebody next to you, you always got one more assignment. <laughs> then in Mark 4, Jesus, after a long day of ministry, is on the stern of sleep, and he was asleep for real, not sleeping in the spirit. He was asleep for real. He was knocked out, you know, like slobber running out of his mouth. He got snot running down. I mean, he, he's out, right? You know, I wonder what Jesus dreams about. You know, I wonder what, what Jesus, what Jesus, I said, look at the person next to you and say, God's crazy about you. He is crazy about you. Maybe, just maybe Jesus was dreaming about you. Maybe he was, he was, you know, as he was sleeping, he, he had a picture of what he could do over and over and over again in the lives of those who would, who, would, who would come after the man in Mark 5, those who were isolated and left for dead, looked like they have no value and no hope. Maybe he was dreaming about them. Maybe he was dreaming about you. And that boat was shaken by wind and waves. How would it make you feel to know that Jesus dreams about you? How does it make you feel to know that he's watching you and he cares more about you? He cares so much about a sparrow. He cares so much more about you. He's asleep on a boat and all of a sudden, here comes the enemy. Wind and waves start beating against the boat. Boat's filling up with water. It's about to go down. I can imagine that the disciples were freaking out. Peter was probably, you know, freaking out the most. <laughs> yeah, I love Peter. He's something else. Come on, man. I can't swim. Get up. Help. Right? Peter holding on to Jesus. Jesus, get up. Do something. So they wake up Jesus acting like they're going to die. You ever been in a moment in your life where you're like, Jesus, if you don't show up, I'm going to die. And Jesus is just like that. <laughs> He's just laughing right you know many times all these movies we watch about jesus we think he's walking around like some hippie you know he's always got his eyes wide open and you know long hair and you know imagine jesus just hey man peace you know and you know he's got some british accent like we see in the movies 
you know, what if Jesus don't have a British, ac British accent, didn't read a script before he spoke, but it just came out of him because he's that powerful. Come on. What if Jesus woke up and simply said, peace be still. And the wind and the waves stopped. He went back to sleep after scolding the disciples on their lack of faith. And here's the deal. Real power can whisper. Peace. Just stop. Stop. I can imagine Jesus. I mean, just, just to prove the point, Jesus getting up out of his sleep, looking at the disciples and being like, I've been training you all day long. And we get in the midst of a storm and you can't even handle it. Watch. Peace. Be still. The middle of your circumstances, situations, trials, and tribulations, just peace, be still. It's that simple. But see, we don't operate in those tribulations. We don't operate out of our spirit. We operate out of our flesh. Because it hurts. It's painful. It's disappointing. In those moments, we don't walk by faith. We're walking by sight. But when we walk by faith, we know the peacekeeper is in the room. The peacekeeper's in, in the building. Come on. Somebody say he's a way maker. For some of us, God's about to whisper into your situation, into your dreams, into your hopes, into your expectations. He's not going to make a loud entrance, but he's about to rearrange your world. What if you were just one worship away? He may not speak directly into your immediate circumstances, but you just got to listen. The wind and the waves had to obey. The word peace in this instant means an unwilling calm. So the storm didn't want to stop, but it didn't have a choice. Are you there? The storm didn't want to stop, but it had to because somebody with more power got in the way. I'm sure the disciples were excited in a sense because they just started walking with Jesus and their, their first ministry experience and engagement had thousands of people standing on the shore. I'm sure they were talking on the boat expecting thousands to show up all the time on their next assignment. But Jesus wanted to teach them something very early in their ministry. And that was that he was not moved by crowds. He's not moved by popular opinion. He's not moved by what the culture says. He left the crowd just to go see about one he had heard was being tormented. <laughs> My question this morning to you is, are you the one Jesus came in here to look for? Could Jesus differentiate you from the masses that congregate in various buildings all over the world that we call church? Or are you one of the, the crazies that do whatever it takes to get the attention of heaven? I don't care what I got to do. Jesus, son of David, I don't care. I'll be like Bartimaeus. Don't matter to me. I'll just be like David and I'll just dance completely uninhibited, unhindered by anything. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'll ask you again, how would you praise if you were one worship away from everything changing in your life? Peter. And one of the other 11 were on the boat as they get near the shore and they're getting excited, hearts full of expectation as they gear up for their next assignment. They get close to the shore and they realize nobody's there. All right, now they're, they're, they're passionate about their ministry with Jesus. They get to the shore and nobody there. Here's the thing. Sometimes the church doesn't see what's right in front of them. We're so busy trying to get our church swag on and rock, walk the right way and sing the right song and make sure I get my seat before somebody else gets it. Come on. We're supposed to be, we, we got to realize that, that, that those that God puts in front of us, they may not look like us. They may not smell like us. That we may walk right past them, not realizing that's exactly who Jesus came for. That's exactly why Jesus put you there in that moment, in that place, in that season. We don't like uncomfortable church because it messes with our understanding of what's acceptable and what's not. But the church is not going to be inhabited by people who went to other churches and they're just rolling through ours. Come on. It's going to be inhabited by people who have a real encounter with Jesus. Come on, somebody who've never heard of him. They're, not, they're going to walk in and they're not going to know our songs. They won't be wearing suits and ties. They may smell like they've been on the street. It's 
it's not for us to simply scoot over just because somebody smells like cigarette smoke oh they stink because when you move over this way you might be scooting up to somebody who may smell like weed so you don't know who you're going to sit next to you don't know who God's going to put in your place all you got to know is he's a way maker and when he makes a way he needs somebody who's willing to go with him to the other side and when you can go with him to the other side you can bring freedom to those who are lost you can bring freedom to those who are bound you can bring freedom to those who are held captive because when you walk with the way maker he helps make you a way maker somebody in this place give God a shout of praise one time hallelujah Jesus you say well pastor you don't know I tried talking to somebody the other day and they just they just reeked alcohol and I just couldn't take it anymore well, I wonder what they think when the church smells like pride oh I'm too good to talk to them they, ain't, they haven't walked where I walk so I can't spend much time with them look, look at where they are everybody was created by the same God we judge, that, we, we judge what people are doing but we don't know how they got there or why they ended up there Why was she sleeping around? She shouldn't have been sleeping around. What was her problem? I can't even believe she's on the... I can't believe she's serving here or she's serving there. How dare them let her serve there? Maybe because she was sleeping around because she was abused when she was little and her father left her at home and the man that was supposed to cover her broke her heart. You ever thought of that? You don't know why people do what they do. So instead of beating them up, stop beating each other up and love them the way Christ loves them. Come on. And so the disciples are getting ready to get to the shore. And they get closer. And, and, and Peter only sees one guy standing on the shore. One guy all alone, filled with 2,000 demons, stuck in a cemetery, living among the relics of, the, of his broken past. And all he looks at are the RIPs of the things that he never was able to accomplish. How many of us today live in a cemetery of our regrets, our failures, our shames, bad decisions? The Bible says that the man was sitting in a cemetery in chains. It's bad enough being in a cemetery by yourself, but he's bound there. And night and day he would cry out and cut himself with stones. The word stone here would parallel the Hebrew law because the law said, shame on you, you're not worthy. And see, that's what the law does to broken people. You don't deserve another chance. Every time we try to let you go free, we have to put you back in chains. You don't deserve another chance. It was funny yesterday, one of the, one of the homeless guys, when we were talking with one of the Burlington police officers, he was, they were joking back and forth with each other. I forget what the conversation was about, but he looked at the police officer and said, yeah, you had to slam me down hard the other day. And the police officer said, yeah, yeah, don't make me do that again. But here's one that had to be disciplined, standing next to the one who did the disciplining, and they're in communion with one another. They're able to love. They're able to be in the same place. They're able to, to find unity, though one had to be disciplined. You see, every time we try to you know, when you get under the law, every time we try to let you go free, we have to put you back in chains. That's what, that's, that's what a lot of people want to think about their relationships or what God's done or what's happened in somebody else's life. You know, they're never going to get out of it. How do we preach forgiveness and how do we preach freedom in Christ if we're always going to take somebody back to the past that they once lived? So he would cut himself with stones and that's what the law does. It tells you shame on you. And that's why grace had to come across the water and declare shame off of you. Come on, somebody. He took the shame off. Now the church wants to scream shame on you. And when people make mistakes, oh, they fell from grace. How many of you hear that cliche, oh, they fell from grace? Let me tell you something. In reality, you can't fall from grace. You can only fall into it. I'm going to say it again. Grace is a free gift. How do you fall from grace without falling into it?
because he never stops working. Grace is the bottom. This man was broken. By the looks of things, he probably wasn't someone you'd want to sit next to in church. 2,000 demons. Any takers? I'm talking crazy. Disciples probably watching him manifest from the boat and telling Jesus, come on, man, turn this thing around. Let's go. Come on. We, we, we don't want to go over there. Look at that guy. Get us out of here. Ever been around somebody crazy and crazy people don't care anymore? You know what God's looking for? Somebody that doesn't care what people think. Somebody that's willing to worship on a Sunday morning, on a Monday night, on a Tuesday night, on a Wednesday night, on a Friday night. I dare you at home, when you feel like you should just get a little bit of crazy on, just go to a place where you can worship your creator and just get by yourself in the secret place. I dare you to try it. I dare you just to praise him all by yourself. I dare you to praise him and come into his presence without an attitude or anything else plaguing that moment. I dare you to give him the room to move your world and shake it. You might just be one worship away. How would you praise if you were the only one worshiping? If you were only one worship away from everything changing in your life. The Bible says when the man with 2,000 demons saw Jesus... He walked softly. Now, wait a second. What did he do? He ran. Somebody say he ran. He was immediately filled with passion, filled with purpose, intense, deliberate, strategic, committed, unwavering. Can anybody free him from his chains? No. He took his chains with him. Some of you are waiting to get freed from your chains before you praise. Let me tell you something. You don't have to wait until your chains have been broken off your life to praise. You keep praising until the chains break. And when the chains break, you praise at another level. And you go from one level to another level you go from glory to glory come on somebody somebody say take your chains with you and you run to Jesus I still got chains but I'm running come on I got chains I got issues I'm not near my purpose but I see Jesus and I've got to keep running they don't believe in me but this might be the only chance I've got so I've got to run so he ran chains and all he ran that's real worship right there when he's got stuff plaguing him, that's, now I've never understood it when people say, you know, I, I, I haven't been in church in a while because I've been going, through, been going through so much stuff in my life. I'm like, what? You don't go to church. You don't come and commune with the body of Christ. You don't get in an atmosphere of, of, of worship where the glory of God can just blow all that stuff out of your life because you got stuff going on. It doesn't even make sense. When you know what you did, are you still going to be able to lift your hands? The devil sent the chains to see if he could shut your mouth. You can have chains in my arms, but devil, you still can't stop my praise. Come on. Even if you cover your mouth, I can still praise him in my spirit. Come on. The Bible says he ran. He ran and fell down and worshiped. How is a tormented man full of 2,000 demons going to fall at the feet of Jesus and worship because demonic principalities and powers tremble and have to fall at the name of Jesus. So when Jesus shows up, hell cannot pursue any further. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, my praise is in my mouth. When was the last time you just fell and worshiped at the feet of Jesus? I want to do right, God, but I keep falling. I want to get to Jesus, but I keep messing up. I want to fulfill my purpose, God, but I keep missing the right moment. And as soon as he worshiped, watch this, his issues called out, Mark 5, 7. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other? Jesus, Son of the Most High God, I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Why didn't Jesus say, Come out of him, unclean spirits? Plural. Why did he only say one, th- one spirit? Unclean spirit. Because 1,999 of them were the fruit of the one. 
All he's got to talk to is one. All he's got to talk to is one. The root of that thing is the unclean spirit. If I get that one, all the other ones that stem from that one have to die because they've been cut off at the root. You know what? Some of you have been praying for deliverance from one thing, but Jesus couldn't free you from the one thing until he gave you the revelation that the thing you are struggling with is really not the issue. The thing that you need to deal with is the thing behind the thing. Come on, somebody. Most people pray about the fruit, but Jesus wants it at the root. You want, to, you want, you want God to set your worship on fire and bring you into the fulfillment of your destiny? Then worship one more time and let God pull it up from the ground. Are you there? It's not the fruit that's the problem. It's the root. And the Bible says he ran and worshiped. Let me ask you, how did he even know who Jesus was? There was no invitation on Facebook. He didn't see a promoted post on Instagram. He didn't get an email. He didn't reach out, you know, he didn't reach out to his friends. He, how could a man with 2,000 demons have the mental stability to see his deliverer from a distance? The clue is in the stones. Somebody say the rocks cry out. He thought the law could save him, but the Bible says he cried out in the mountains and in the tombs. That means it was all good. He was worshiping. When it got bad, he kept worshiping. How many of you know sometimes you don't even know what to say, but just cry out? And Jesus left the crowd because he heard the cry of one worshiper that was in bondage. The, the law thought it was going to keep forever. And so grace had to swim across the water to the other side because that's what Jesus does. This is why the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Worship is an attractor factor. The Bible says that the demons ask for permission. Don't send us away from this area. Now I realize why so many demons wanted to kill this one man. He was the key to the whole region. Now you understand why you've been battling some stuff in your life? Where you're at right now? In this season? In this place? A part of this church? How come nobody else is going through this stuff, you say? How come nobody else's marriage is going through the stuff my marriage is going through? How come I feel oppression all the time? Because you are a key to this region. You are a key to this city. And people can try and run you out, but God is going to always bring you back. Come on, somebody. You're a key to revival. And this is the warfare that comes with having that kind of anointing. So when the enemy's messing with you, thank God that he's coming after you. Because he's coming after your anointing. He's coming after your future. He's coming after your destiny, your promise. He's trying to reduce the anointing that God has put upon your life. And if he can torment you, if he can sh chain you and shackle you, then he's got you right where he wants you. Because he makes you ineffective. But you don't don't worry because he's gonna God's gonna come across the water he's gonna run across the water and get to where you are and he's gonna break the thing that's held you captive somebody say I'm just one worship away <laughs> hallelujah he cast out 2,000 demons. The Bible says the man who was left for dead was now sitting clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. I just stopped the water and the waves from getting in the boat. You thought you were going to drown. You see what I'm doing with this guy, and now you're still freaking out. When are you going to learn a lesson? Listen, how come they weren't afraid when he was filled with demons in bondage? The way they are when they start to see this thing release. You're not scared of him then? Wait until he gets free and now you're scared? Why is that? Oh, because some people like you better when you're broken. Some people would rather see you tormented and bound and held captive than to see you free. Because if you're free, you then become dangerous to the control they had over your life. 
They're scared when you get delivered that you're going to realize what you carry. And if you realize how anointed you really are and what you carry, then hell itself is not going to be able to stop you. They were afraid if you ever get a revelation of what has been invested in you, you're never going to be the same again. They are terrified that you're going to be free. I'm saying, Jesus, please, please send us into the pigs. Send us into the pigs. He's like, okay, watch this. Gone. Off a cliff. In the water. Dead. Has 2,000 demons. He did everything he could. This party, smoking this, doing that, sleeping with her, sleeping with him. But none of it was enough to stop Jesus from getting to him. Let me say this for all the religious people that think there are some people that are beyond the reach of grace. You talk to me about about Mark 5 and you dare tell me that somebody is beyond the reach of grace. We are standing in a grocery store the other day, and this girl's checking, checking us out at the register there. She's got full of satanic tattoos all over her skin, all over her arms, her neck, all kinds of stuff all over her. I looked at my wife as we were leaving. I looked at her. She's the sweetest person in the world. And I looked at her, and I said, those tattoos do not brand her soul. Nobody is beyond the reach of grace had he had he had one worship left and he pointed his worship in the direction of Jesus he fired the last worship he had before he was to fully be taken over did Jesus come all the way across the sea through the wind and through the waves leaving thousands of people on the shoreline just to cast out 2,000 demons no he came to free one worshiper that was crying out just one worship led one one cry of worship led to 2,000 demons being destroyed being cast out of that man what if you were just one worship away from everything in your life changing how would you worship if you were 60 seconds away from everything in your life turning around and coming together from every chain falling off your life, if you had one worship left, would you point it in the direction of Jesus? People may think you're crazy. Why would you spend your time worshiping on a Sunday morning when you can be sleeping in? Don't you know you work Monday through Friday? You got to get up early Saturday and do stuff with the kids. Why don't you just let Sunday be your day where you don't do anything? Because you are only one worship away from the breakthrough that will cause God's mantle to rest upon your shoulders in a way you've never seen before. What took, let me say this, what took other members of your family out is not going to take you out if you'll just get that one worship in your spirit. One more worship. You've got to run in the direction of Jesus. You've got to run in the direction of the altar. You've got to run toward your deliverance. Run in the direction of your breakthrough. How would you worship when you got to a place in your life to you said, you know what? No more of what I've been through. No, Listen, you can be at a great place in your faith, but I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go to another level in my faith. I'm ready to go to another level in my worship. 2018 is going to pale in comparison to what God is going to do in two. 2019 if you thought last year was good if you thought last year was blessed you wait and see what 2019 is about to bring if you were in this place today and you said 2018 was horrible it was horrible I can't wait to get out of 2018 well great because God is destined to produce something in your life that you've never walked into before you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord and God is going to release to another level your journey your faith faith your walk your anointing your glory and that is revealed to people in the earth is going to be at another dimension i just wonder if there's anybody in this place today who can say i'm willing to give one more worship i'm willing to press in one more time i'm willing to go through one more battle i'm willing to go through one more war i'm willing to go through one more day one more night because i know the way maker is going to chase me down He's going to come across the sea. He's going to come across any battle, any fight. He's got to go just to get me. He is crazy about you. Come on, somebody. Give God a shot of praise in this place today. 
He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. My God. Somebody say he's worthy. Tell somebody else he's worthy. He cares so much about the one because there's so much power in one. You may say in this place today, well, you know what, I, I, I haven't even really done anything significant for God. The fact that you are in this room today signifies that he's already done something great and powerful in you. And he who has begun a good work in you is going to be faithful to complete it. The fact that you are here in this room today, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you've battled. I don't care how difficult and frustrating. I don't care how horrendous your life is. It's interesting, this is the message that I, that I spoke today. There's a brother in Christ we haven't even met yet, but we're, we, we, we've talked on social media now. And powerful deliverance ministry. Powerful. I watch some of the stuff that he's, he's operating in, and I'm like, man, I need to, we need to get that guy here. Because there's going to be a significant breakthrough in this region because of you. The worship that is in this house, the worship that comes out of you and I is going to blow the roof off of Vermont. It's going to blow the roof off of New England. And Jesus is hearing the cry. He's hearing the call. He's hearing the body of Christ from deep within our spirit back in heaven again and saying come and fill this place fill this place with more more of your glory more of the anointing more power every head bowed every eye closed if you're in this place today you don't know Jesus and you want to say yes to committing your life to Jesus right now the Bible says if you confess in, with your mouth you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth you will be saved you need to be baptized if you're in this place today and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior every head bowed every eye closed just just let me look put your hand up right now so I can see you if there's anybody in this room you've never accepted Christ and you want to say yes I want you just to lift your hand right now don't miss this moment if there's anybody Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person in this room today. Lord, if there's a soul in this place today who doesn't know you as their Savior, may they encounter a moment with you, God, where they turn their life around and they give it to you. Father, touch every heart, touch every life, touch every body in this place today. If you're watching this online this morning and you don't know Jesus I want you to call us and we'll pray with you this week we'll agree with you and we'll help lead you and direct you and guide you in this newfound faith God's got you right here watching right now for an incredible moment in your life your life can be turned around and never go back to the way it was to the way you're living right now, he can turn it around. You may be in your midnight hour in this room, watching us right now online. You might be in your midnight hour, but there's a God who's willing to go all the way across the sea from one shore to another just for you. He's going to chase you down because he loves you that much. Father, I thank you for every word that has been spoken in this place today. I thank you for a release of your mighty power of your anointing over every heart in life today free every captive free every soul that's been bound 
free every tormented mind and release your spirit to break anything and everything that's been holding your people bound and captive in Jesus name if that's you in this place today I want you to receive this word I want you to let it root I want you to let it sit and stir on the inside of you and realize that when you leave this place today you are free in Jesus name put your hands together one time and just bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he's worthy hallelujah hallelujah if you need prayer this morning I want you to come so we can pray with you we can believe with you intercede for you before you leave today you need to be like Jesus and go after somebody we've got Christmas Eve invites out front at the reception center please pick up a few of these Christmas Eve invites put them at your job put them at your workplace pass them out to your neighbors get somebody here because the way is going to show up on Christmas Eve we ain't just going to go through the, 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 the rigmarole of Christmas Eve. We're expecting God to show up. Come on. I mean, it's Christmas is what it's all about. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. Let his face shine upon you. Let him give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord bless you. Love up on somebody as you go. Bring somebody to church with you next week. It's going to be powerful.